Taylor here with AgriSpray Drones. I'm gonna show you guys a tutorial on how to fly your J150 for the very first time. Now obviously this drone will fly by itself 95, 99% of the time, but it's really important that your first flight is manual. Fly it with the sticks, use the camera, learn what everything on the screen means and get comfortable flying it. It should be second nature because when something happens out in the field and you need to fly it, you should know how to fly it very quickly and very naturally without thinking too long or too hard. Um, and then I'll also get you more comfortable with the battery life um, and some other features and functions of using the interface to control a, a drone that um, is different than a lot of ag equipment that we have used in the past. So uh, what I'll start with is turning on the remote. That is a long press and then a short press. So long press till the lights all turn on, and then a short press after that. Remote's gonna start booting up. And while the remote's booting up, we can go ahead and put a battery in our drone. Now we have our drone unfolded, all of our arm locks are clamped in. Double check and make sure that props are out. The props don't have to be at a full nine or 180 degrees like this. If they're like that, they will spin out to 180 degrees with some centrifugal force. Um, but make sure the arm locks are clamped in. Check out our tutorial video on how to make sure that everything is tight right here as well. We'll take our battery and we'll put it in. Make sure that positive matches positive, negative matches negative. And make sure that you push your battery down just like that. Make sure it goes all the way down onto your terminals. If you just set it in nice and gently right here, sometimes it might not go all the way down onto the terminals. Push it down, there it goes, fully seated. And again, long press till we get our red light right there, and then a short press. While that boots up, we can go ahead and turn on my screen recording so you see what I'm seeing. Okay, we can click on our Smart Ag 60 app. Uh, that is the app that we're gonna run the drone in. This system here is basically, it's an Android system that runs an Android app. Um, and so if we swipe up from the bottom of the screen a couple times, we can get back to all of our main, you know, all of our Android apps. If that happens, just go back in your Smart Ag 60. It'll run in the background at all points in time. Uh, even if the drone um, is flying and you close out of the app, it'll still run in the background. Okay, um, so, our drone's connected, it connected automatically. We have GPS signal now. It'll initialize by itself. It'll get GPS signal by itself. Um, if you have any error messages, those will pop up on this screen here. Or if we go into our auto function, go to auto, if you have any error messages, then those will show up right here on the top left. You see this drone is obviously not its first flight. It's actually flown uh, over 11,000 acres. Uh, so uh, 12,000 by the end of today, actually. Um, and so we have a left rear disc ESC uh, disconnected air. It's not actually disconnected. It's just maybe starting to go out right now. Okay, um, so for flying manually, uh, I want to do a few things first before we take off. Check our settings. We're going to go into settings. We're going to, under uh, flight settings, we'll check our manual RTH settings. So if you're in manual flight, this is what it's going to do for return to home if you use return to home. I don't recommend you that you do whenever you're practicing. Uh, obstacle avoidance turned on, and a train following. Now this is just depending on what you need to do uh, for entering and exiting the field, uh, but we're gonna enable the train following. We're gonna set our return to home speed at 25 feet per second, um, and our height will set that to 15 feet high. Again, depending on what your scenario is, that will dictate what you set here and we'll want the drone to return home to us whenever, if it ever loses signal. Uh, you have to set this now because if you lose signal, you can't set this then. Uh, so we'll want it to return home to us if it loses signal because we have nothing between home point and field. And that should be everything we need on flight settings. You can change your image transmission power uh, to adaptive or strong, but we're not going that far here, so we'll leave it on standard. Under perception settings, Especially for your first flight, make sure you turn on manual H or manual horizontal obstacle avoidance. Um, and then you can change your distance for your first flight anywhere between 20 to 36 feet uh, is fine. If you want to get closer to things, go lower or turn it off. But if you turn it off, if this is off, you can crash into something. It will let you crash into something. So make sure that is on and then the radars are active and will stop you from uh, 
from hitting an obstacle. At least it should. And everything else should be set just like this is altitude, altitude hold. You can change your radar sensitivity, but medium is usually fine. And then battery settings, last thing to check. Uh, you'll usually want to select automatically determine low battery, but before you do that, let's go ahead and set 30% in this box. Uh, that's going to give us a warning at 30%. Um, and then we're going to turn that on. So it's going to start flashing at 30%. It's going to return whenever it actually needs to based on some smart resume features or smart return features. Um, and everything else here is going to be fine. 47% warning on voltage or 47 volts and low battery at 10% is fine. Okay, uh, now we're going to pull up our camera since we're flying manually. We're going to pull our uh, antennas up and we're going to make sure that the area is clear and we have a nice big open area with no obstacles to practice flying in like we do here. All right, now before we take off, let's get familiar with our sticks and some of our controls here. So on the left hand side, we have our camera gimbal. That's the roller right there that moves our camera up and down. Sticks right here, this is going to be up. So you push that up, it's going to fly up, down, it's going to descend, and it's going to be turn, left, turn, turn left and turn right. Now this is your lateral movement, forward, backward, slide left, slide right. Um, I would prefer that if you your first flight and your first drone you've flown, start flying from the back of the drone. That way, if you push forward, the drone goes forward and away from you. Because if the drone is facing you, it's going to go the opposite direction. All right, now we're going to do some disarming and disarming. So to arm the drone in manual, sticks down and in. It's going to give you a three second countdown. It's going to beep for three seconds and it's going to spin up, but it's not going to take off. It'll sit like this and it will not take off unless you push down on your left stick right here and then it kills the props. And again, that's arm. And disarm, just like that. Very good to know how to do that just in case you need to kill the props very quickly. Okay, now we're gonna arm it and take off. Drone is armed. Now, once I push up on this left stick, it's going to go up. Now, it's on GPS altitude hold, so it is not going to move. Even if the wind is blowing, it's not going to move around unless I move it. So forward is here. We're going to fly forward. We're going to practice going each different direction. We're going to practice spinning around left and right and then combination go forward and up forward up and left bring it back down and then face it towards you so now it's facing toward us so if i move my stick to the right it moves to my left and vice versa this is really important for return to home flights because if you're returning to home to you, it's going to be flying just like this. All right. Now, once you get comfortable looking at the drone and flying it, I highly recommend that you get comfortable looking at the screen and flying it because chances are whenever you're fl flying on, especially on a big field, um, you can, you'll be able to see the drone, but maybe not exactly where it's at, how close it is to objects and obstacles. Uh, and on here we have obviously our camera which is on a gimbal, which can go up and down. Uh, we also have our radar right here and our radar right here too, uh, which we can see our upward radar on this 10,000 acre drone, maybe having some communication problems today. Um, and so if we get close to something, like I'll get close to uh, the pivot over there, we're gonna see that radar is going to pick up that uh, that pivot as as an object in front of it and it's going to show up on the bottom of our screen so you don't have to just use your camera if your camera feed isn't very good you can also use your radar because your radar feed is just data data coming in from the from the drone
So there you see that I had to get low enough to where it was actually by it. So there you see it's picking up that pivot as an obstacle right down here, and it's showing up as an orange or green obstacle. Uh, that means that we are probably getting too close to that obstacle. If it's green, you're good. If it's orange, you're probably getting a little bit too close. And if it's red, uh, you're much too close. You saw how that popped up on the top of a radar. That means it was in front of the drone. Same thing will happen if you uh, back into it. It'll show up on the back, on the bottom side of your radar. Or if you go into it from the side, it'll be on the side of the radar. You can also look at your speed and your height at the bottom of your screen there. The height is really important to, um, to get used to looking at. If you can't see exactly how high you are, looking at the bottom of the screen for your height. As I come down here, you see it's going down. All right, now we're going to do a manual landing. I'm just going to push down on my left stick, holding that stick down until it completely disarms. There we go. And now I can let go of my left stick. Manual landings are pretty easy. I'm going to show you again a couple things on manual landing. The drone's going to slow down automatically uh, whenever you start bringing it down. So if I pull my left stick down, the drone's going to go pretty fast. And it's going to start slowing down. There you see it's slowing down. I haven't let go of my stick. But it's always a good idea not to fully depress your stick as you get close to the ground until you're on the ground, uh, just in case the radar doesn't pick up the ground or if landing on a trailer, um, not fully depressing is a good idea. And then you can notice whenever I get low to the ground here, I can't turn. It won't let me turn left and right. That's a safety feature. And notice I'm not, I don't have my thumb on my right stick as I come down. Because if your thumb's on your right stick and you're going down and you're really close to the ground and you bump your thumb over and you don't have your obstacle detection on, it might not sense the ground as an obstacle and might go uh, might put a prop into the ground if you're landing on a on a slope like we are. So keep your thumb off of your left stick as you bring the drone down. Or, sorry, off of your right stick as you bring the drone down. Just use your left stick, descend, and then fully depress it until the props stop. Okay. That was a fairly thorough uh, first flight. Um, safety is the most important part here. Uh, these drones are big. They can be dangerous. Make sure when you take off, you stand plenty far enough away and make sure you're operating in an open area uh, with no other people um, or uh, obstacles uh, to hit um, and practice 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 many many flights uh, i would recommend doing this with an empty tank and then try it again with about a half full tank and then watch how long your battery life lasts because it's going to be pretty surprising how quickly your battery life drops from a uh, from a full tank or from a half full tank to an empty tank Okay. Let us know if you guys have any questions. Thanks.